If you're like me, you would probably like this book, and I almost kind of recommend that. Something's not right in this town. I feel like I might lose some people on this one. Nacho Mama's Dark Academia, celebrate women, or just read both and watch the movie. This has nothing I'm interested in, and it just like blew me away. I'm Sam. There's quite literally no one asking me to do this, but oftentimes when I read a book, it reminds me of some of my favorite movies. So today I thought I would do a book recommendations video based on movies that I really enjoy. If I mention some of your favorite books and you haven't seen the movies, maybe check out the movies. As always, please check content warnings before diving into any of this because a lot of the stuff that I read is pretty gnarly. So the first movie I want to talk about is the movie Gummo. So this this is a movie I've only seen one time, but it left quite an impression on me. It's really just about this very poor community that is decimated by a tornado and kind of the aftermath of the tornado and how these people who already started off very poor are now struggling that much more after the decimation from the tornado. So one book that reminded me a lot of this when I was reading it was The Devil All the Time by Donald Ray Pollock. The stories aren't necessarily the same, but it's this sense of the grim reality of crushing poverty. This sort of like poor southern white experience felt very similar between Gummo and the devil all the time. It really shows the crushing and disturbing nature of poverty and how disturbing it is to live in such dirt poor conditions. These stories are also similar to me in that the ensemble of characters in the book and the movie comprise these characters across an entire region or across the entire town and then the story kind of progresses as we get points of view from these different characters and we see how their stories intertwine. So yes, if you like the movie Gummo, you should read The Devil All the Time by Donald Ray Pollock. And if you like the book, you should watch that movie. Okay, next is one that's maybe a little bit too on the nose, but I just can't stop associating these two. So the movie I have in mind is Heathers, which is from the 80s. It's great. You know, it's about this popular clique of girls in high school. They invite this new girl into their clique and then sort of the cattiness and violence that ensue. So one book that really reminded me of this story while I was reading it was Bunny by Mona Awad. These are very similar. We have this popular clique of girls who have this sort of sense of mystery and intrigue around them. And then we have our main character who is swept up into this group and invited into the fold. So there's this sort of magical feeling of finally being able to see behind the curtain. Both have this academic setting. Both are somewhat grounded in reality, but there's also this pervasive feeling of unreality, kind of like a fever dream, kind of like absurdity. Is this real? What's really happening? And I would say both stories have a very violent edge. These are Nacho Mama's Dark Academia stories. Both are really sharp, quick, funny in some ways, and just really celebrate women and all of the Fifty Shades of f***ed up flavors we come in. Next, I have two movies for a single book. The book kind of reminds me of a love child between the two movies. So the first movie is Silent Hill. It's technically was originally a video game, but I'm specifically thinking about the movie version of the story. And then The Village, which is kind of a subversive M. Night Shyamalan movie, but I enjoyed it. So Silent Hill is a movie adaptation of a video game wherein a mother has to search this seemingly haunted town for her missing daughter. The village is about this like old timey village and there's a bunch of monsters that come at night and are like picking off the village people. And both stories really have this sense of something's not right in this town. So a book that really reminded me of these two stories when I was reading it was Extasia by Claire Legrand. A lot of these I don't have because I've lent them out to friends, but all of these books I really did enjoy, so I promise <laughs> these are good books. So Extasia also features an old timey village. It has this eerie atmosphere and again this sense of something is not right in this town, but I can't quite put my finger on it. There's these like monsters picking off the townspeople, so there's sort of this like mystery element of like we have to figure out what's going on, but then there's also a lot of witchiness and young girls being persecuted as witches. So I think if you like Silent Hill, the movie, or The Village, you should read Extasia. Next is the movie, The Ring. When I was reading this book, I specifically was reminded of the US version of this movie. So for those of you who aren't familiar, The Ring is about this cursed videotape where when you watch it, you have seven days to figure out how to stop it or you will be killed by this like ghost that comes through the TV. 
TV. So the book I read is Whisper by Yuko Chang. Whisper is similar in that you are being haunted through technology, but rather than being haunted through the TV, you're haunted through the radio. But it has a similar vibe in that once you're haunted, there's this sense that it's inescapable and you have this finite amount of time before you're out of time. You know, it's not like these stories are exactly the same, but if you like a main character who is trying to solve sort of this mystery surrounding this haunting, they have a set amount of time to do it in order to save themselves or someone they love and to stop the haunting, you probably would like Whisper by Yuko Chang. So you should check it out. Okay, next one, I don't know. I feel like I might lose some people on this one, but when I was reading this book, I just really got the vibes of this movie. <laughs> so the movie is Get Out. So it's sort of recent horror film by Jordan Peele. So so this is about a guy who goes to meet his girlfriend's parents and basically as soon as he gets there he feels like something is just kind of off about this family but he doesn't quite know exactly what. So the book that reminds me of this is Pew by Catherine Lacey. This is pretty different story-wise from Get Out. Pew and Get Out both really capture the tenuousness of being an outsider who is being introduced into a new community of people. You know there's always that anxiety as the outsider. Are they going to accept me? Am I gonna like them? Am I gonna be free to be myself around them? Am I gonna feel like I have to change around them? Kind of all of those little social anxieties that everyone feels. Imagine that getting amplified up to a state of pure terror. And while I don't think Pew is as horror or as violent as Get Out is, I still think that that eerie, unsettling feeling of, I'm not really sure what's wrong with this community, but there's just something I can't put my finger on about them. And it gives me the creeps. That similar like something is not right with these people is apparent in Pew and Get Out. Okay the next movie I want to talk about is one of my all-time favorites and that is Fantastic Mr. Fox. This is such a cozy wholesome movie with such endearing characters and one book that kind of reminded me of this when I was reading it was Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead by Emily Austin. If you really like the characters in Fantastic Mr. Fox, you know fumbling through life trying to find your place and getting to a place where you feel comfortable being who you are, you would like this book. I think both the movie and the book discuss the endearing and universally relatable theme of feeling like you don't fit in and finding the beauty in your individuality. Kind of being forced to embrace your individuality by hopelessly failing at trying to change yourself and present yourself in a way that you think will be more palatable. Basically if you like Ash from Fantastic Mr. Fox, I think you're really gonna like Gilda from Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead because both are just hopelessly weird but in such an endearing way. I think you should read this book and watch that movie. Okay, next movie is Annihilation. So I guess for those who don't know the story of Annihilation, in general, it is a person goes on this secret expedition, secret science expedition, and when they come back, it's almost like, did they really come back? If you liked that movie, I have two book recommendations. The first is kind of on the nose. So you should read the book, Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer, which is the original source material for the movie. <laughs> but I will say the movie is so different from the book. This book is freaking weird and it's so abstract. So having watched the movie first made me realize how difficult it was to adapt this into a movie. So kudos to whoever adapted this into a screenplay because the movie is good and the book is really good, but they're pretty different. So I think you should read Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. Another book recommendation if you like this movie or if you like this book, you should read Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. Again, we have a person who goes on this expedition and when they come back, they just don't, they seem off. I will say, Annihilation is more about the expedition itself, whereas Our Wives Under the Sea is more about the aftermath of the expedition, and we then have some flashes back to the expedition. So if you like the theme of someone going on an expedition, coming back, and you're like, did they really come back? I think you would like either of these books. If you like the expedition side more, go for Annihilation. If you like the aftermath side more, go for Our Wives Under the Sea. Or just read both and watch the movie. Okay, last is There Will Be Blood. There Will Be Blood is loosely based on Upton Sinclair's book, Oil, but it's not like a true adaptation. And I've never read Oil, so I can't really recommend it. When I went into this, I was like, there's no way I'm gonna like this movie. This has nothing I'm interested in. And it just like blew me away. It was so 
good. It's pretty different story-wise, but when I was reading No Country for Old Men, it kind of gave me similar vibes as There Will Be Blood. But There Will Be Blood and No Country for Old Men both have Southern Gothic vibes. Both are gritty, violent stories that, again, going into them, I thought I wouldn't really give a shit about them, but there's just something about the stories that are so good and they just suck you in so much. I will say, I think what really made these stories stand out to me is that there are a few key standout characters who just demand that you pay attention and they just won't let you look away because their performance is just so good. I love complex, flawed, morally gray, and honestly even downright fucked up characters. So if you're like me, you would probably like this book and this movie because both have a lot of those. So this will be part one and then I will plan to record and upload a part two. So hopefully you guys like this because I'm already doing it. What are some good book and movie recommendations? What's your favorite movie? What's a book that reminds you of that? Let me know. So thank you so much for watching. You can like this video if you want, comment, subscribe if you want. I would love to have you. And thank you so much for being here. I love you so much. Uh, goodbye.